In this video prepared by Confor Empresario Latin America, we are going to compare in just 8 minutes, using the manufacturer's tables and programs, the compressor that works with Roan 134A refrigerant, with the compressor that works with RSI x 100 Let's make the comparison, starting with a typical quarter HP compressor used in domestic refrigerators. For Rhone 134A, using the Embraco catalog, we obtain the following results. For a refrigerator that works at minus 20 degrees Celsius, the cooling capacity that this compressor can achieve is 940 BTU per hour. Now in the Embraco catalog but for RSI x 100 the compressor can reach a cooling capacity of 852 BTU per hour. This means that the compressor with Rhone 134A, having a greater cooling capacity, would reach the low temperature faster than the RSI X100 a compressor. Now we are going to study the electrical consumption for the compressor that works with Rhone 134A, whose value will be close to 179.4W, which is calculated with the energy efficiency factor in the table. Now for the compressor with RSI x 100 a direct value of consumption is obtained from the table, 124W. As we can see the energy consumption of the RSI x 100 compressor is less than the consumption with the 134A compressor. We have already seen differences 1 and 2 with the Embraco catalogs. Now my colleague Paco will quickly explain the remaining differences related to the thermodynamic conditions of each gas. Three, the volume or size of the molecule of RSI X100 is nearly double that of Rhone 134A refrigerant at working temperatures. Four, due to the size of the RSI X100 molecule, its compressors are larger in volume, compared to Rhone 134A compressors, but not with greater electrical power. 5. One gram of RSI X100 can receive more heat than other refrigerants, so the amount of RSI X100 present in a system is low. 6. The diameter of the capillary used in refrigerators with RSI X100 is larger and may have a shorter length than that used with Rhone 134A. 7. In case of using a RSI X100 a compressor with Rhone 134A and the characteristics of the capillary are not changed, the compressor will be forced, since too much refrigerant will enter its suction, increasing electrical consumption. 8. The electrical components with RSI X100 are different for contact spark precautions. Now to check the capillaries used by both the compressor with Rhone 134A and the compressor with RSI X100, we are going to use the following program. We are going to use the cooling capacities that were obtained in the first part of the video, that is, for a refrigerator that works at minus 20 degrees Celsius, the cooling capacity of the compressor with Rhone 134A was 940 BTU per hour. Let's fill in the boxes of the program. Now the following capillary values are obtained. For a refrigerator that works at minus 20 degrees Celsius, the compressor's cooling capacity with RSI X100 was 852 BTU per hour. Let's fill in the boxes of the program. Let's fill in the boxes of the program. Now the following capillary values are obtained. Now we are going to review the pressures that both the compressor that uses RSI X100 and the one that works with Rhone 134A handle. To understand how the pressure of RSI X100 works we must analyze the following five points. We recommend you pay attention to this explanation. 1. 
remember that the value of atmospheric pressure is due to the weight of air. Therefore, it is logical to assume that the less amount of air there is inside a pipe, the less influence of atmospheric pressure will be. 2. If we assume that the vacuum made by the pump is perfect, that is, all the air that was inside was removed, then the influence of atmospheric pressure inside the system is zero. Therefore, inside the pipe there is no pressure. In this case, the manometer will mark its lowest scale value, that is, the most negative value it has, for example, minus one bar. 3. Now if we introduce RSIX hundred into the system, part of the negative value will be lost because now there is the pressure exerted by RSIX hundred. As it is difficult to have a precise measurement for such small pressure values, it is highly recommended to work with RSIX hundred only with special manometers for this gas. This manometer clearly brings the temperature scale, together with the depression in a very simple way. Thus, for example, for a low temperature of minus 10 degrees Celsius, we only have to wait for the needle to stop, with the equipment turned on at the value of minus 10 degrees Celsius, in this way the following pressure value is obtained. Now we have low pressure for equipment that works at minus 10 degrees Celsius. Here we have an absolute pressure of 29.4 psi. To know the pressure that the manometer would show, we subtract the atmospheric pressure from the table value. This gives you 29.4 psi minus 14.7 psi. This subtraction results in a gauge pressure value of 14.7 psi. Thus, for example, for a low temperature of minus 20 degrees Celsius, typical of domestic refrigerators, we only have to wait for the needle to stop, with the equipment turned on at the value of minus 20 degrees Celsius, thus obtaining the following value of pressure. Low pressure for freezers, for a temperature of minus 20 degrees Celsius. Here we have an absolute pressure of 19,404 psi. To note the pressure that the manometer would show, we subtract the atmospheric pressure from the table value. In this way, 19,404 psi minus 14.7 psi is obtained. This subtraction results in a manometer pressure value of 4.7 psi. The main recommendations for recharging the RSIX hundred are refrigerant. Let's start by saying that in the recharging process, special attention should be paid to the following aspects. Two, loading must be done strictly by weight. B, it is not recommended to load by pressure, because very low pressures are handled, which can lead to errors in the process. C. To validate the final pressure of the equipment, it is recommended to have manometers with a good appreciation of vacuum pressures, preferably digital. D. As the charges in domestic equipment are low in grams, it is recommended to pay special attention to how to weigh the refrigerant. D. And, do not discard any refrigerant that may be trapped in the hoses before completing the charging process.